Welcome to the world of advanced chroma key controls in Final Cut Pro. You probably know that basic chroma keying is a breeze in Final Cut Pro, but now it's time to explore the more advanced options. Let's dive in and unveil these powerful features. We've got a clip ready with the keyer effect applied and we're ready to fine tune it. First, let's select our foreground clip with the keyer effect applied and then head over to the top right corner where the inspector resides. If the inspector isn't visible, just click on the icon with three sliders and then click the film strip icon for the video inspector. You might have already tweaked some of the controls to improve your key, but if it's not quite perfect, these advanced controls will do the trick. Now don't get overwhelmed, we'll walk you through each control step by step. Start by clicking the arrow next to color selection. This opens up a treasure trove of controls to refine your color key. Focus your attention on the graph first. You'll find two options, scrub boxes and manual. Scrub boxes limit the chroma and luma controls to softening the mat, while manual allows you to control the tolerance of the mat, giving you more precision. Here's a handy tip for you. Begin your adjustments in scrub boxes mode for a smoother start, and then switch to manual when you need more precise fine tuning. Just a heads up though, be cautious when switching between manual and scrub boxes as it might affect your key results. Now let's talk about chroma. This nifty control, represented by a color wheel, lets you adjust the selected hue and saturation range that defines the key. The aim is to narrow this range while keeping your key clean and accurate. Inside the circle, you can use the outer graph to control the softness of the edges. Drag the outer handles to extend the range. In manual mode, you can access the inner graph, which controls tolerance and core transparency, but be careful not to create holes in your subjects. Now let's explore these control setups, beginning in scrub boxes mode. Luma is a gradient scale, allowing you to modify the light values of your selection. In both modes, you can adjust the lower softness handles, which influence the edge transparency based on brightness and darkness. Switch to manual and you'll find upper tolerance handles that affect the core transparency. The Luma roll-off slider adjusts the matte softness around the edges, focusing on regions affected most by Luma, while the Chroma roll-off slider does the same for the key color range. If you're keying compressed media and encountering jagged edges, the Fix Video checkbox applies sub-pixel smoothing to the Chroma, usually providing smoother results. Before we dive deeper, how about sharing some positivity? Just give that thumbs up button a little click. It's a fantastic way to let me know if I'm on the right track with my explanations. And it also guides others to discover this video. Much appreciated. Now let's dive into matte tools, which allow you to control the transparency of the keyed object. These tools come in handy for more translucent subjects like water or hair. Switch to matte view for a better look. Levels control the contrast. The left handle establishes the black point, the middle one determines the midpoint of the distributed gray values, and the right handle sets the white point. Shrink and expand manipulates the contrast of the mat, the controlling edge sharpness. Soften feathers the edges uniformly, while erode increases or decreases transparency from the edge inward. Back to composite view, you might find your adjustments went a bit too far and revealed some green screen. In such cases, consider tweaking the shrink and expand values. Now on to spill suppression. Spill suppression is most effective in eliminating unwanted outlines around a subject that's closely positioned against a green screen. It directly correlates with the spill level setting you choose. If our spill level is at zero, these controls won't have any impact. For the sake of demonstration, let's crank up our spill level a bit. Spill contrast is like a gradient slider that fine-tunes the contrast of the suppressed color. This can help diminish the grayish outline around your subject, which might occur due to color keying, and the tint control works to bring back the subject's original color. However, be cautious as excessive adjustments might overly tint your subject with the complementary color of the green screen, which in this case is red. The saturation control influences the intensity of the suppressed color in your foreground subject, which in this instance is green. 
Now let's reset our spill level to zero. Lastly, let's explore light wrap, which blends subject colors with the inserted background to create a seamless integration. The amount slider controls the overall effects reach into the foreground. Intensity adjusts gamma levels to brighten or darken the interaction. Opacity fades the light wrap effect and Mode offers different compositing methods for blending the background with the keyed subject. Usually it's a good idea to try out each of these options and see which one works best for your specific situation. Let's break down what each one does to give you a better sense of their effects. Normal. This option uniformly blends the light and dark values from the background with the edges of the keyed foreground. Lighten. It examines the overlapping pixels in both the foreground and background and retains the lighter areas, creating a selective light wrap effect. Screen. This choice overlays lighter portions of the background onto the wrapped areas of the keyed foreground, resulting in a more pronounced light wrap effect. Overlay. When selected, this mode combines the background with the wrapped areas of the keyed foreground. Here, overlapping dark areas become even darker, light sections get lighter, and colors become more vibrant. Hard light. Similar to overlay, this mode intensifies colors while also slightly muting them. So, there you have it. The world of advanced chroma key controls in Final Cut Pro. Ready for your next adventure in video editing? Discover the art of perfecting white balance in Final Cut Pro with these simple steps. Click here to dive in.